this out, guys. Can you believe this? I planted these seeds less than 48 hours ago, and they're already up. These white egg turnips, and some of the ones down on the bottom are already coming up too. I just cannot believe how fast these germinated. Hey there. So I've got my seed set up down here in my food layer, which is what I have taken to calling our little room that's still in the process of being organized. Uh, this is my shelf, which I have a variety of different seed starting lights. Uh, I've tried all different kinds. I've got like a regular shop light. This is a VivaSun. Um, this one is probably the nicest. However, it is also uh, the most expensive. I've got these Hidden Harvest Company lights. These are also really nice. And then I've got these little strip ones, which work pretty well. They just don't cover as much space. Still gotta clean out some more. But I've started some white egg turnips, butterhead lettuce, uh, rapini broccoli, and purple sprouting broccoli. These have already started to come up. This is the last tray that I did, and so I don't see any germination in this yet. But these are calendulas, kaleidoscope kale, Cordobue cabbage, flame star cauliflower, graffiti cauliflower, uh, more calendula, rutabagas, and then down here I see some more germinating. I just can't believe how fast this happened. Less than two days. Red boar kale, Bloomsdale spinach, some cilantro, more calendula. I did like multiple different kinds of that. Red ursa kale, rainbow swiss chard, purple lady bok choy, ragged jack kale, scarlet kale, elephant dill, and dark red uh, Detroit dark red beets. Also down in the food layer we have our big freezer. Got a, tr a shelf with some stuff drying. Ben Turn is actually using our incubator to incubate some eggs that he brought from his house and his chickens. So that's running right now. And then we have our freeze dryer. So I was a little late starting my seeds this year. The last month was a bit of a blur. I, I went ahead and started them, though I would have preferred to do it at the end of July. It's about four weeks late. However, I do have the high tunnel. So I went ahead and started all of these things. I'm still gonna start some more. Specifically, I'm gonna start more bok choys, more lettuces, some different things that I can basically succession sow. And I went ahead and got some starts at a local nursery. I went a few days ago with my mom. I was looking for Brussels sprout starts because that's something that you really do need to start early and I did not get them started. I'm gonna try to start some more and see what happens, but I wanted to have kind of a head start with that. And they're back in the high tunnel. That's what we were about to go do and then it started raining really hard. I'm about to go out to the high tunnel and plant some stuff. Do y'all wanna go with me? No, thanks. No. I do. Okay, well, come on. What are y'all doing? We're, we're building a we're building a city inside the house, and adults are kids, and kids are adults. Oh wow, that sounds like a fun city. All right. Now well, we Toby's to, gonna come with me. We're gonna build a lot of house. We're gonna get. We're gonna build a lot of houses inside the house. Okay, okay cool. In your room. We know. Okay. We've only built two, and it took up most of the room. Okay. Well, we can build more. So, hey, when I get back in, it's school time. Okay. Okay. Coming. You coming? Yes. That's the wild mm -hmm. horse It's definitely, all the animals are in their barns. Yep. Oh, it is starting to get harder. Okay, we got a lot. He's <laughs> chasing us. <laughs> A great benefit of having a high tunnel is season extension and still being able to garden on rainy days. So quite a few green tomatoes. All right, so here are my starts I got the other day. I didn't get just a whole lot. That rain is coming down, huh? Oh yeah. I wish I had a jacket in the morning the way. It was just barely sprinkling when we started to walk out here and then it got pretty, pretty I, Like I heard it chasing us. I'm yeah. Like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I wanna show you guys what I got started. Do you wanna go ahead and start planting some of these? Yeah. Um, how about some of this stonehead cabbage? Yeah, like you like cabbage, don't you? Oh. On the grill? Oh yes, oh yes. How do I clear? Okay, let's, come here. Well, all I need you to do, let's do this one on this side. Okay, so you're gonna see these stems here yeah. in the beds. That's where the tomato plants are cut off and those stems are just gonna break down in the bed. So just leave those alone and just plant next to them. 
So what I want you to do is plant these. So we need to put like a shovel and a half length between them because this shovel is probably about 12 inches. So we'll go about a shovel from one hole and then about half a shovel to the next, okay? So just dig the holes just like that down this row. And how am I going to And then you carefully these? take these plants out and put them in. And, and you might want to use your hands to put yeah. the soil back around them. There you go. Thank you. Okay, so fall crops. Um, as with anything, the sooner it started, the sooner you're going to have food. So right now I just started all of those cabbages and stuff from seeds, whereas these that I purchased are about eight weeks ahead of those. I live in a place that's very hot, so right now when I'm putting these cabbages in the ground, I actually don't think that they would do very well if I put them out in my outside garden. In the high tunnel, they're covered with shade cloth, so it stays a little cooler in here. Um, cool weather crops are a little more tolerant of shade, so if you live in a shady lot and you've failed trying to grow peppers and eggplants and tomatoes, you might actually do okay with cool weather crops. They're gonna grow slow, but uh, they're, they're more tolerant of shade because they are crops that have adapted to grow uh, during cool season, which there's less sun, but during cool season, the days are shorter. With these, I went ahead and took note when I was purchasing these starts, and like this Fast Vantage cabbage, this is just a, like a hybrid variety, um, and it has great heat tolerance. So right now, that's the thing that I have to be concerned about. I need these to grow, but not just immediately go to seed. Cool weather crops, that's the struggle, that if it's too hot, they're just gonna send up that center stalk and flower instead of like creating a head, which is what I'm trying to grow these for, to eat. So I got some amazing cauliflower. It says it matures in 75 days. I got some Destiny broccoli. Um, maturity in 40 to 54 days. Hestia Brussels sprouts. I got two little packages of these Brussels sprouts. I am gonna go ahead and start some from seed, but this whole thing I'm gonna plant in these, these two beds that are already empty. And these will be the first cool season crops we harvest. And then behind this, I'll come in and I will go ahead and plant all those seeds I just showed you have just sprouted. And then that, my idea is hopefully that I can keep us in these crops throughout the fall and winter. I got some Georgia collards. The collards, any collards are super cold uh, hardy. And so actually I usually will grow collards out in my garden through the winter. I don't even have to cover them here. I'm in zone seven. A, B ish, I'm kind of in between the two, which means that the coldest that it ever really gets here is around like zero to 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like negative um, 17 to negative 12 degrees Celsius. And with that being the case, uh, there are some things that can just grow throughout the winter outside. They don't need cover. These other things, one layer of frost fabric and they can grow throughout my winter here. Um, I also got some Fast Vantage cabbage. This is another one that's supposed to grow really quick. So all of these started plant purchases, obviously not fully necessary, but by planting these now, I should be harvesting um, cabbage and cauliflower and broccoli in October, whereas those that I'm planting from seed, I probably won't be harvesting until December here in my high tunnel. Tobias, beautiful job. Wow, you're doing amazing. Great gardening, boy. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to eat this cabbage when we grow, whenever we harvest it? Yes. Yes. And we'll tell everybody, this is the cabbage that Toby grew. So Toby, I'm gonna take this tag that says Stonehead Cabbage. I'm gonna put it right here at the beginning so we know what kind this is. You wanna, grow, you wanna plant another package? You can just, here, just do this. See? And since these are starts, we can just move the mulch back around this. And I want to turn the drip system on so we can water these guys in so they can get a little drink of water, okay? Wait, how do we turn it on? Um, back in the back. So I just turned the drip system on so it's just watering this one bed. And this does water from our well. Here we've got some rutabagas, some uh, kale, dinosaur kale. 
and some beets coming up in this bed. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to rain all day. We're gonna be planting a lot of stuff. Yeah, you wanna go ahead and work on the next, the next pack? I think I have another pack of that same kind. That looks like, there it is, you found it, good job. So just go ahead and go down the rest of the line with that same type, okay? Well done, thank you so much for your help. So I just wanna give you guys a quick couple of tips about buying started fall crop. When you purchase a six pack, well, I'm not gonna use the collards as an example, let's do the cabbage as an example. A six pack of cabbage like this. Each one of these plants equals one head of cabbage. My number one piece of advice if you are gonna buy started fall crops is to find a nursery that sources it starts locally and if you can't only buy six packs um i think these were let me see where's the pack three dollars and 95 cents for a six pack um this is obviously why i prefer to start from seed because a pack of seed is what three dollars and you've got a hundred heads of cabbage in a pack of seed whereas this pack is six heads of cabbage this pack is six heads of cabbage uh, for three dollars and ninety five cents now if there is a national brand that um, does plant starts and a lot of times that's what you can find is that national brand if you see one plant start for cabbage cauliflower broccoli uh, head lettuce anything like that and it's one plant for three dollars and ninety five cents you are essentially paying three dollars and ninety five cents for one head of cabbage that you may or may not get because you know bugs could get it or something could happen to it so to me that is absolutely not worth growing this is already a stretch sometimes this is necessary i decided to go ahead and do this so we could get harvest sooner um, but you'll notice i mean i only bought like one and a half flats of these i think i spent roughly about 40 bucks, which was the extent of what I was willing to spend on started plant. And I wish that I had just started my seeds on time. I didn't, it is what it is, but it can easily become uneconomical by buying started plants for things that just don't yield. Now, what, buying one started plant for $3.95 for a tomato that you'll get pounds and pounds of fruit off of one plant or a pepper that you're going to get a large harvest of fruit off of one plant, that makes sense. But whenever you're talking about fall crops, these are not fruiting plants, these are vegetables. And so I'm only really gonna get one good harvest off of each one of these plants. And you mean you can eat the outside leaves and like broccoli and cauliflower, they're put off side shoots, but really you're only getting one big harvest. And keep in mind that root vegetables, one seed equals one root. And usually you do not see started plants for root vegetables. You can stick it anywhere there, it's fine. You don't have to though, because they're all the same. Thank you. Usually, um, I have seen before started uh, beets where you're buying a six pack. Uh, that's more rare, mostly you don't see that. And the thing is, is that root vegetables, you can direct sow them and have them pretty quick. Like right now, if I sowed any sort of beet or turnip or rutabaga in this high tunnel, I would be harvesting it in about 50 days uh, if I put the seeds directly in the ground. Now, I do start those sometimes inside, which you can move them out. And the benefit of doing that, like I started all those turnips and the beets and stuff inside, I wanna plant those in these beds that currently have tomatoes and peppers in them. By starting those inside, I can leave these out here in the bed for more, you know, a handful more weeks before I have to move those out there. So you see, that's the benefit of starting those. However, if I was gonna buy a six pack of beet plants, I'm spending $3.95 and I'm getting six beets. That doesn't make good financial sense. So if for some reason you come across people selling started root vegetables, I would highly suggest that you just go ahead and buy the seeds and direct sow those and wait a little bit longer. So, so Toby's here planting these cabbages and my plan on these beds is like we're running cabbages all down one side here. And then I'll probably give it some space and over here, um, starting about the middle of the bed, we'll probably do some lettuces, some beets, some roots, some things that are gonna grow a little bit closer together. And we'll probably do something really similar over here. Now this trellis I've left up and this is going to be peas. Okay, so side note from the fall crop, let's go back to summer over here. Got these peppers, which are really hitting their peak. 
And right here, this pepper is called a habanada. Hey, Tobe, you want a pepper? It's not super hot. I attempted to grow these last year and I didn't get anything from them last year. My peppers just did not do well. I started them, I moved them out too early and the cool nights just stunted them for the rest of the season. But this year, I held off planting them, planted them in a high tunnel. We've gotten lots of peppers this year. And these habanadas have made, thank you, my must grow list. These are so good. I got the seeds from Baker Creek. I think that they're available multiple places now. I think Baker Creek might have been the ones that introduced them a few years ago. But uh, they are so, so tasty. That you know, Habanero peppers are very fruity. Okay. They have a, you'll try it. <laughs> they're very tropical in flavor, uh, but they're hot. And I actually love eating peppers, but I can't do just a ton of heat. I can put habanero peppers in other things, but not very many of them. He will pour a ton of hot sauce on his food. And he, he, he likes it really spicy. I can't do things as spicy. I have a couple kids that like spicy stuff. Like Asher and you. Asher and you, that's right. I love the flavor of pepper. So the habanadas, ready? They're super fruity. Not at all spicy. They honestly taste like if there was a pepper flavored fruit snack, seriously. I mean, they obviously don't taste like refined sugar, but they're so good, they're sweet, and they just have this fruity flavor. Oh my gosh, I come back here every morning and eat these for breakfast. You like it? No. <laughs> You're not a fan of raw pepper as much, are you? <laughs> He's trying. Somehow I failed to change my battery out, so I'm going to have to say farewell for now. Thank you guys for hanging out with me this morning. Oh, oh also, us. oh, with us this morning, excuse me. I also wanted to say that I'm very sorry. We canceled our live really last minute last night. I had to go get my kids, and uh, you know how it is. Even when there's 2,000 people waiting for you, when the babies need mama, they get mama. Well, you ready to say goodbye? So thank you guys for hanging out yeah. with us. We bless you. We bless you. Until next time.